Hey, hello there. It's me, RGB, back in action. For RGB TV, where today we are going to dive into a match between two players who have been playing with the foreigners for the last couple of weeks, a couple of times here and then, every now and then, and have shown great success, have shown great success on the map. It's Bio, here on the yellow Rodos, and we've got Amber Kasasu here on the Orange Terran. And I'm going to do something different for once. Instead of talking over the first two minutes, it's going to be an ASMR for StarCraft sounds. Just for the first two minutes. Just for the first two minutes. So let's bump up the game sounds and have you enjoy the sounds of SCVs mining and probes. Oh, this is a little bit annoying, a bit high pitched. Let's just look at the SCVs. So now go back and forth and listen. You know, actually, actually, sorry to just bump right in there without warning whatsoever. This game kind of looks familiar. It kind of looks like a game I've casted not too recently. And now I'm, it's starting to come into my mind. Uh, have I casted this one before? So well, let me just really quickly check while we're looking at this. I'm going to go onto my YouTube channel and quickly search for um, basically... Well, I've done this before. I haven't done a lot of Beal replays on my channel, so it should be very easy to find out have I done Beal against Brain. And in fact, I don't think I have. I mean, I no, I haven't done this before. You know, that's kind of the thing. When you cast a lot of replays, sometimes things are, <laughs> sometimes things do look the same. Because honestly, there's only so many different kinds of openings you can throw. And, you know, that are viable, that you can use and are viable in every single situation. Some scenarios are just very unlikely. Some build orders are just really not that great altogether. So Humber Kasasa here very quickly adapts. He very, very quickly adapts to the situation. He sees he's getting scouted very early on. And now it's time to turn down the game sounds, because honestly, the game sound is a little bit too loud. You can barely hear my voice, I assume. Let's lower it a little bit, all the way down there. All right. Maybe this is a little bit too low, maybe it's not. But we've got Zealots running about in Humber Kasasu's space who very quickly adapted to the situation. He went for command center first, but then saw that, hey, my opponent scouted me very, very quickly, which probably means he's right next to me, which probably means he's rushing. So I got to cancel that command center. He built four barracks really, really quick. Got the bunker up there in the back, protected his main really successfully, really easily, really quickly. Biol, though, on the other hand, now knows he's got a pretty safe start here. Hamburg Kasasi can try to go for the counter attack, but I think there's enough zealots and enough time to get those cannons up there in the front. He's going to try to stop them from happening, though. He's going to try to stop them from warping in by sending his marines out into the middle of the map, but as five zealots are in between, ready to buy time, and the marines haven't balled up yet. So they're going to get surrounded by the zealots, and they're having a pretty difficult time microing backwards. He gets out of there, though. He's going to win the Marine against Zelda's fight, but he's going to lose a lot of Marines in the process. And he's going to buy himself just enough time to get the cannons up there in the front that should keep Humber Kasasu out of his base. So Humber Kasasu stops producing Marines. He went for four barracks in total because he wasn't feeling safe. He, he felt like, holy crap, i got to get some units out there. So four barracks is a lot of barracks. And he stopped making Marines, lifts one of them up to send it beyond the hill. While his academy is on the way, the command center also on the way there in the back. He's got enough gas for stim and maybe some fire bats once that barracks there lands beyond the hill. Triple on a double nexus coming out there for Bio. He, yeah, basically just the regular two gateway nexus build order here from him. There's already uh, robotics are on the way in the backside and a Siddle of Dune finishing up. 
the Seal of Dune finishes before the robotics, which maybe leads me to believe he's gonna go for the Templar's Archive first, go for Dark Templars, that is a Templar's Archive indeed, so no double robotics, it's gonna be a single robotics into Templar's Archive, usually that really does mean it's going to be Dark Templars. Firebat there on the way from the barracks, so it's a Marine. The Academy hasn't finished yet, so no Firebat coming out from that one. Bill is scrambling, ooh, oh wow, this is so great, the Marine is gonna spawn right inside that little box. It was so amazingly well placed by Buell. That's insanely well done. I haven't really seen anyone use a structure in their advantage or to their advantage kind of or quite like this. Amazing placement. I've seen players um, situate their zealots though in this exact formation to block the unit once it spawns and it pretty much just forces the Terran to cancel production on the barracks and lift it up get information or maybe send the barrack back or maybe do both gather information and send it back so the sport bay there is finished robot number two is now also on the way our temples are going to come out first shuttle speed also under production he's got the engineering bay there finished in the backside pulling back his marines because he knows our temples are probably on the way so adaptations 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 both players are adapting really well although the other is kind of just sticking to his build order, sticking to his guns, also Stargate there on the way. I wonder if the Dark Temples are going into the front to extract in the front, or they're going to go in over the side, get flown in by the shuttle. He's going to fly him in by the shuttle. I've seen some players try to wriggle their way in there and distract with Dark Temples in the front, and then fly in from the side with Double Reaver in his shuttle. It's a lot of different ways you can play with the mind of your opponent. So Dark Temples are there in the base, ready to start scouting, but most of all, of course, to try and be very annoying and he has a scanner in the back with only turrets on the side now there's no turrets in the front no turrets in the back so this is going to be pretty difficult for him to defend does he have energy on a scan got energy there scans the dark temple one dark temple goes down but the other one is nowhere to be found so that one probably also went down so both dark templars don't do much but they do get information two more dark templars are getting lifted up into the shuttle and ready to flow beyond the hill the Warriver on the way for that other shuttle, and we also have a Corsair there to assist and get those shuttles into the base beyond the turret. So first we got the Dark Templars unloading in the base, tank is there in the front, bunker there as well, Marines are coming in hot, ready to get us around on the Dark Templars, get us around on the Dark Templars, scan them down and take them down within the blink of an eye, they really don't do much once again. They did take down an SCD, but nothing of significance has happened or transpired in favor of Biol, mostly in favor of Hamburg Asasu, who's now with 32 SCDs against 52 from Biol, so the game is progressing nicely for both. The game is progressing nicely for both. Neither player has really taken a hit. Both players have to somewhat adapt a little bit. Humberk is also more so than Bjol. Reavers are landing in the front in range of the tank. Take some tank shots. They're on their face. They break through the wall, but there's so many marines behind the wall that don't really think this is going to do all that much. Tanks are tank is taking scare up shots. Tank goes down. Some marines go down as well, but the marines have stim and they take down the zealots. Zealots have speed finishing up just after they go in for the fight. Don't take down the turrets so they're. Shuttle Reaver can fly in. I think he kept most of his Reavers alive. Well, half of his Reavers. Not most, exactly half. It's right in between most and nothing. Commands of number three, they're on the way. The five barrack production here in the back is really helping him out a lot with defending. He isn't very rich because he went for a delayed plus one command center, a very slow third command center. So yes, money isn't in the best place imaginable. Also has a lot of gas in the bank that he hasn't been able to spend yet, but he's got everything he needs for defending up and running. Bjorn now on about eight, nine, nine gateways. Drop there prepared, right at his nexus. Gonna go over the bottom side, fly straight into the Marines. Probably gonna load on top of the Marines, starts to go in. Armbrick has anticipating something is coming. He scans just earlier, saw movement inside the base that the shuttle was getting loaded up. So he knows something is coming, but he doesn't really know where it's coming from. So he is no units on the top side, mostly on the bottom side, because he's he is assuming Bill is gonna use the quick way into his base. And this is the short side. This hill here is the short side, and usually players go for the short side. But he seems that's flying all the way around, going for the weak side, the long side. The side that you don't often expect the player to be coming from, but it's actually one of the best options to go for when you're right next to your opponent, just to fly all the way around and try to catch them off guard. But Marines are on the way, he spotted it out where the Marines are on the side, Marines are stimming in, stimming in, target firing the shuttles, he's unloading right there on the scene, Double Reaver, everything gets taken down really quickly, Templar can't even storm, takes on the, the Reavers before they can even shoot. Insanely accurate and fast target firing. Even though his units were all balled up and he could have lost 
everything to the storms and the rivers. He takes everything down with target firing within the blink of an eye. Very, very fast reaction times and very accurate clicking. Even faster than Beal could select, storm or target fire with the reverse. So really well done there. The diversion or the subversion of expectation by going all the way around doesn't catch Humbergus House of Guard, but he still managed to save his shuttles or most of them. So he's going right back in with even more than last time. Although this time around, I don't see any reavers in there. It's mostly zealots and Templars. Now in about 12 gateways, gonna add on another row. He's got a lot of, a lot of stuff here coming in on the side. He's really spending his minerals very, very well. Despite not being an absolute APM monster like, for example, Humber Kasasu or some of the other players. Or it comes in for the bottom side there, though. So he doesn't want none of that. There's way too many Marines around the bottom corner. So yes, once again, he flies around, but Humber Kasasu scans, sees it. And now he knows that the drop is going to be coming in very soon. Level 1 armor for air is finishing up soon. I, there it is. Level 1 armor is finished up. Level 1 attack for Zealots. Level 1, level one armor for Zealots. Biol is also an armor connoisseur. He likes and prefers armor instead of weapon. Goes in from the front, can load here behind the wall. Reavers on the scene, Thumbs on the scene, Thumbs. Oh, Marines are coming in. Marines are dodging the storm, but still running into storms as well. He's trying to keep those Marines away or at least kill them. He's trying to break through the bunkers as well. There's a lot of Zealots here with armor. The armor really helping them out. I do believe the Marines have level 1 attack, though, that might give them a little bit of extra damage on the level 1 armor. It looks like Biol is breaking through. These are coming from the back to the front. Tanks are seizing up as well, just out of the range of the wall. The wall hasn't gone down, but most of the bunkers have. It looks like Beal is now starting to lose all our units. Reaver arrives on the scene as well. We're going to be ready to take down the bunker there on the bottom side. Shuttle taking damage on the third, but does stay alive. Barely though. Stays alive. It can still start doing damage. Most of the Marines have gone down. He's going to have to pull more units from the back to the front. The bunker there being a pain in the ass because it's getting... It just takes so long to take it down. And in the end, it does look like the attack... Does break the front, kills a lot of units, but doesn't quite do the trick to do more damage. But StarCraft Fast is a game of step-by-step -step progressions. Now tanks are up on the hill, he picks up some zealots immediately, but the shuttle goes down. So he can't load there on the high ground to stop those two tanks from defending. But Humbrick's house there stays alive, lost a lot of units. He had like 40 maybe... 35 marines, now he's down to about 10, another wave of marines spawning though, so back to about 12. We're gonna put more tanks up on the high ground here next to the, well, on the side, in between, the on the hill here. The game is progressing really nicely, got Karius already on the way from Biel. Biel is playing this one exactly as you should. He's playing this exactly as you should. Very smart. Very quick transition into carriers. Doesn't stay on. Doesn't go for mass gateways. Just goes straight for carriers to help himself defend the hill, which is the usual point of contention when you're this close to a Terran. Flies in, flies all the way around, manages to arrive on destination. SVs are not running away. Temple like a storm. Is it really a storm? A lot of Temple are on the scene, but he dodges the storm right in time. Only loses a single SC. The, there's still a lot of Zealots here in the bottom corner, but they're kind of boxed in, blocked in, walled off. They can't really go anywhere. There's SCDs. They're blocking them. Bunkers blocking them. They're locked inside a prison. Inside the prison behind enemy lines. Nowhere to run, nowhere to go, and they all get taken down. Please. Woodies. Did take a lot of effort, though. But... They die pretty quick. Maybe ease is not the word I was looking for. They die pretty quick without doing much damage. But the actions required to pull it off, that ain't easy. It's a very highly intense maneuver to defend a drop like that. And to keep your workers, mostly all of them, alive. It ain't easy. It most certainly ain't easy. Alright, so we've got carriers spawning here in the front. Carrier production is on the way. More are in production. We've got carrier capacity finished up and air upgrades as well on the way. I think he's on level 1 armor, level 2 weapon, maybe level well, 1 weapon. So 1-1 one, one most likely. Zealots are coming into the front door. That's a lot of Zealots, Templars, and carriers as well. Supporting it immediately goes for the attack with a small amount of carriers supported by a huge amount of Zealots. This is when Hamburger's house is going to be tested to the limit. He's pulling back his barracks because he realizes I shouldn't have lifted those barracks up into the air. I need more marines. I probably need ghosts as well. I really need more units. These things are now getting tricky. He's losing the front. The tanks on the high ground are a problem, but the carriers can take them now. The carriers can deal with the tanks on the high ground. For now, it looks like Hamburger Sasu manages to minimize the damage dealt. This is tanks on the high ground just dealt so much damage. 
split units are pushing in high. The carriers pull back, Zealots are still in production, ready to go in for another frontal attack. Will this next frontal attack do the trick? Carriers come in, Marines are getting into the bunker, tanks of the high ground are going to have to really, really take care of those tanks. Starve's taking care of the tanks, once those tanks of the high ground are gone, attacking should be much easier because Zealots are not going to be tripping out there in this choke point. Comes in, he's now inside the base, Marines are in the backside, Ghosts are also on the way, Lockdown is being a research, Cloak for the Raids, Drop comes in, isn't defending the drop properly there though, Drop goes in all the way, Reaver alive on the scene, Reavers are gonna shoot, but the Scarab doesn't connect, and now he goes for the command center. Oh, might not be the best choice to go for the command center here though, the command center has taken a lot of damage, but not quick enough, he's gonna have to repair it, now the carriers are gonna have to run away, although there's not much they can attack, and there's a raid air in the air, two raids, three raids, and a Valkyrie, Valkyrie's gonna get taken down, carriers are hanging there in the front, being very annoying, but ooh, he's got Cloak finished up, and there's no observer on the scene. Bill just made a massive mistake not having observers here present, but it's going to take a while for those raids to take down the carriers. They're not that quick taking them down, and in the meanwhile, Bill is making the best of it by taking down as many tanks as he possibly can. Raids are on 111 upgrades. He's got pretty good air upgrades. The tanks are still on 0, zero. Marines are also on 0, 02, so he is getting level 2 upgrades for the Marines. I really like that one. Been seeing that more often recently. Instead of just going for zero, or, well, one zero of one attack, zero armor, players are going for level two weapon more often these days. Zealots are coming in, getting in between those factories, taking a couple of them tanks, but not really hurting him too bad. A lot of raids have spawned there as well. He's getting bigger, stronger as time goes on, although he's not really allowed to build a bigger base. This army is growing in size, and Zealots are just, you know, going after everything they can. We've got another wave of carriers on the way, about six of them in total, one has finished a couple of courses there as well to take care of the raids, got observers now in the mix as well to of course detect the raids. The hill hasn't really been abused much, because Biel is just doing such a great job of continuously attacking and putting pressure on Humber Kasasu, not allowing him to, to basically bunker in, get comfortable, wall up and set up tanks on the wall and start pushing towards the probes. Usually we've seen a lot, but Biel here has been attacking, he's actually been attacking non-stop, he's actually been doing a great job, but so has Hamburger Sass, who defends himself exceptionally well. He's defending himself exceptionally well. Now on 8, 7 starports, only 5 factories, we've been having on 2 more for a total of 7, so 7, 7, 7 starports, 7 factories, pretty much maxed out at this point, 88 STBs, he's pretty rich, pretty comfortable. Money from all the gas, got four armories for all the upgrades, got ghosts in the back there with energy, and with, I think, Austria implants, and of course, lockdown research. Corsairs are on the scene, zealots behind them, carriers are in the air, taking down some bunkers and preparing for the frontal attack. He's got some observers there, he's got some, that's not some, that's a whole lot of observers. Carrier comes in, lockdown is happening, triple lockdown is hit and connected, but the carriers, were, only three of them are still operational. Now we've got the Valkyries coming to take care of the last remaining carriers. They're just gonna make, they're gonna tear through them, but now the Corsairs are coming in as well. Corsairs coming in to take down the area units, Rates are retreating because they can't really fight into the Corsairs. Corsairs would take down those Rates within the blink of an eye because they simply do so much damage against stacked up units. Goes in for the observers while the Corsairs are not present, but the scan duration ends. Flies away, trying to escape, Kors is on a chase. Forces have done a good job there, carrier is still in the air. Another lockdown there, only one more carrier is operational, maybe two of them are operational at the moment. There's another one. Five carriers stuck in lockdown, but nothing to take those carriers out of the air, because the Corsairs are a true menace. This might actually be the breaking point where Hamburg has might get taken down, because he doesn't have a lot of units. He lifted up his barracks once again, so he can't really produce that many ghosts or marines to help himself in assisting taking down those carriers. And now Zelos are coming into the front door, ready to break down, tear through those factories, and start progressing deeper and deeper into the base. The Valkyrie spawn there on the side, another walk down there on a the carrier, but Zelos are breaking through, getting in between the factories. Umbertaus is being pushed to his limits. Raids are dancing back and forth, trying to avoid the course, but the forces have taken down the raids in like a single blink of an eye there. They, just, they were there, and the other moment they weren't. Valkyries, same story, getting taken down. Tanks are spawning, but there's almost no anti-air as I said before. He lifted up his barracks way too early, and there's no Goliath. There are Goliaths in production, but they don't have Karen yet. I don't know. I haven't seen Goliaths shooting anywhere yet. Humbrick's house is getting overrun. Bill has played this one beautifully. I didn't think it was going to work, but the Corsair carrier interaction against the raids was absolutely superb. 
Humbrick has really relying on the race to defend himself and the Valkyries, but the Corsairs were micro controlled so well that the rates were never really a factor. So now the Valkyries coming in there though, but look at this, there's no tanks. All the tanks have to be taken down by the gateway units. Dragoons are in between the factions and the barracks. This is looking painful at the moment. Take it down, the tanks are up on the high ground. Carriers are running back and forth. The lockdowns have ended. Now the carriers going for the Valkyries. Valkyries don't have much support. They're also getting hit by the Dragoons from the low ground. And the Duke have taken down as well. The upgrades here, of course, are of course very good. But the point of contention is, of course, the carriers here in the middle of the base. Not much to fight back with. Zealots are coming in as well. He's trying to block Zealots there with the SCVs. But the SCVs go down to his own tank shots. And now it's the GG calls for the re, and that's it. Byol defeats Hamburg Asasu quite convincingly. Honestly, he managed to put real amounts of pressure onto Hamburg Asasu non-stop, continuously, throughout the entire duration of the game. Some attacks didn't quite succeed, some attacks really killed a lot of units, but eventually at some point he broke through, went for a very nice tech combination of simple gateway units with Corsairs and Carriers in the mix as well, and Observers, Templars here and there. I really liked his game plan, and his execution was crisp and accurate. It was really nice to behold. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We've got a game number two lined up, just for you, that we can get a satisfying conclusion, maybe even a game number three, if this game doesn't go to Biel. Best of three, or... Who knows? Humbrick Asazu here on the Terran. On the uh, Protoss, he's on the yellow Protoss. They've switched around their colors. The previous game was orange Protoss Buell, and now we have a yellow Protoss Humbrick Asazu, and an orange Terran Buell on the middle of the map. The top middle of the map, in fact. And we have Humbrick Asazu here on um, the yellow Protoss. I've said before, middle left of the map. This time around, we're not gonna have those sweet SCV ASMR sounds, let's just speed up the game, get straight towards the point of action. Speed it up. Speed it up, Scotty. Speed it up. Gateways, double gateway, standard, double order, or a Protoss against Terran opening when you're on a middle spawn location. Not a lot of risk involved, the gateways are mostly there to maybe catch the Terran off guard going for one for a plus one command center. But they're mostly there to help secure the choke, help defend against early bunker rushes or any rushing attempts from a Terran that a Terran might try to pull off. And then he goes for the Nexus after or before the double zealots are queued up. First we get the double zealots, and then we're gonna see the Nexus. Standard stuff, but honestly. This build order from Humber Kazasu does produce some really exciting matches. And with these two players, you know that it's going to be a great match. Like last game was honestly... I'm not even mad that the Protoss won. Because the Protoss won without really hitting a single storm drop. He just won with pure, sheer execution and game plan. Without hitting a storm drop. Without hitting a storm drop. Now that is to be respected. That is a display of skill. So double assimilated around the way, Forge not yet queued up. Zealots are moving across the map, he kind of knows where Bill is located on the map. I'm gonna hunt him down and start tearing down that front door. Zealots are splitting up here though because he isn't quite sure he's going to the left. Oh yeah, he knows now, he saw him. Zealot there walks into marina range and takes so much damage that it's practically, practically a dead Zealot. While that's happening, I need a drink. I really do need a drink. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. It's some kind of mix with apple and pear flavor. It's honestly amazing. Okay, okay. Now we've got the Cyber and the Forge on the way. You can't quite make anything happen here against Biol. I mean, the guy's got insanely good marine micro, so trying to make something happen with just two zealots, or just zealots from a 2 gateway production, it might be an impossible task for most, if not for everyone. He comes in. Maybe I spoke out of turn. Because this is looking pretty menacing. 
Six Zeldas there, Marines are running away. They do find a nice little foothold there next to the barracks, is where it's harder to micro the Zealots and easier to micro the Marines in between the structures. Now, Fire Bats are spawning as well. However, Kazasu pulls back because he knows the Fire Bats are most definitely on the way. He's gonna try to break through the front door there before the cannons finish up, but it's gonna be a very close call. Very close call. I think those cannons are gonna be fine. Although he comes in, stimming in. Ooh, so be very close. Cannons are, yes, just in time, exactly on time gonna take oh he's going for it he's going for it but the cannons are in the back are really supporting doing a great job takes down one cannon but loses most of his army and is forced to retreat worth the shot though worth the shot if he could do it ooh, the game would have been over right there and then the both players exactly precisely on time with everything they had to finish and everything they had to do by the thousands of a second Maybe tenths of a second, maybe thousands of a second. It's a little bit an over-exaggeration. But it was like, within the time frame of a second, everything just fell into place perfectly for Humber Kassas to defend. And Buell was just a little bit too late. But he couldn't have been there any sooner. Really well played. So now he's getting his plus one command center and his factory and the engineering bay. Because, you know, these players like their Dark Templars. Although Dark Templars not on the way here from Humber Kassas, because he went for Robotics, Citadel, Robotics, Support Bay, and there's no Tempus Archive at the moment, and it's not going to be there within the next minute or so. So he has to get Zelda Speed, level 1 weapon attack, to have Shuttle Speed, to get a Shuttle itself, and has to get two Reavers before he even thinks of building that. What was it called again? Oh, Tempus Archive. Before he thinks of building the Templar Archive. I can't change my availability to offline. Whatever. I'm going to be seeing front notifications pretty much all game long. Sorry for that one. The starboard on the way there. Very early starboard. Going for five barracks just because that is the thing you got to do when you're on a middle spawn location. There's five different directions the enemy can come from. Maybe even six if you count this one. Well, yeah, five, five. This. We've got the bottom south here. We got the southeast. We got the east. We got the west and the southwest. Five different directions, five barracks just to cover every single angle with an adequate amount of marines. That is the idea. It isn't always enough. Sometimes it's more than enough. It really depends on how well you can react or how good your vision is of the map to react to the shuttles flying. He's standing there in the front. Not moving, he starts moving, Reavers are unloading. Zelda's are on a chase, Zelda's on a speed yet, don't have level 1 attack yet. Bill keeps fighting, he's gonna go in from the back. He's gonna go in from the backside. Might not be the best choice here, but he has no choice. Zelda's are running in, they're getting blocked and clocked up a little bit there in the front. Reavers are unloading there inside the base. You the tank doesn't take damage from... Oh, the tank doesn't take damage, but did take damage. Oh, but the tank stays alive. Reavers, he's getting surrounded by everything. It will look really bad for Bjol here, but somehow he takes so little damage. Because he had such an amazing unit split. He split up his marines, his tanks, his medics. He split up everything really quickly and prevents taking any serious losses of units. That was seriously impressive. It looked really bad when Hotbreaker's house just walked right in. It looked really bad for a second there. But Buell somehow manages to out-micro the situation. I mean, he, he, he's a great micro player. Like, he's a semi-pro player. So, yeah, he's naturally going to be amazing at micro. But that one was really nice. It's difficult to split up all those units just in time against double reaver show. But Zealots in the mix as well. That situation doesn't quite work out or pan out for Buell as he wanted to, As Humbrick says he wanted it to. It pans out in favor of Buell. Buell doesn't have any main drop defense yet. We don't have a starport yet. We do have a Wraith against the shuttle. Getting Marines splitting out across the map as well. Engineering Bay there on the side. Turrets on the sides as well. We've got... Everything is going nicely for Buell here. Everything is going nice. Level 1 attack. They're on the way. Command center's finished up. Got scan. Third command center. Is that the third command center? It's an engineering Bay for Vision on the hill. Humbug has no getting Dark Templars. A lot of Dark Templars. Gonna maybe try to... Break through the front door after taking down the turret. Maybe she's gonna go straight for the drop. Turret there, a load a couple of zealots. Marines are on the way. Tanks are within. Reavers are within range of the tanks. 
One Reaver goes down before it really does anything, starts taking on Purser on the side, picks up the Dark Temple to find him in there on the side, tries to avoid the Ray, doesn't want to take damage on the shuttle, comes in, gonna unload his units there. He starts to unload, Dark Temple is in, Dark Temples are gonna protect the Reaver. He goes for the Reaver right away anyway, takes down the Reaver, now the Tempest are on the scene, the scan comes in, Dark Tempest is going to get taken down by the scan, they're running into the corner, going to try to avoid detection, but I think he's got another scan here, there comes scan number 2, takes down the Dark Tempest in another attack that I usually see be very successful, or Humberg Sasu doesn't really work, because Buell saved up all of his scans, because he knew Humberg Sasu likes Dark Templar Reaver trickery, so he saved them, he feels safe enough, not to scan, to choke here, to know when the drops are coming. He's relying on his map awareness and his reaction times and his micro to keep himself alive, not on the information gathering. Usually I would say, don't just rely on all those things, but also rely on information gathering to help you get the timing of those drops down. But he isn't, he's just relying on using the scans for defense. He might start using them after he has turrets up everywhere in his base. There's no turrets in the backside here in the middle yet, He's got turrets everywhere on the sides. It's going to be pretty difficult to Dark Dark Templars in there once again. It'll be pretty difficult. But a drop is being loaded up. He's got four robotics, so one is still on the way. Horses all being added into the mix. Wonder what's in there, although I'm going to check a little bit later. What's inside these shuttles? Empty? Empty? Zealots? Templars. Okay, so we got about seven units in there. What is he going to achieve with this drop? Is Bill going to defend this one adequately? Goes into the top corner. Any time now, he's gonna go in. There he goes. Corsair's right in the middle to take damage from the turrets and maybe even from the Marines if they don't target fire specifically on the shuttles. Sees very fast reaction. Target fires the shuttles down. Temples are loading. Temples not getting taken down with target fire storms. Not on the SVDs. He assumed most of the SVs were already gone, but he still had a large chunk of about 15 SVs are right on the mineral, maybe even more than 15. Really think Humperk has went for the wrong choice. I mean, he saw SCVs running away from the mineral patch, and he assumed he was out of range to hit any SCVs, but there were still some SCVs there on the mineral patch. Maybe killing the range was the right choice, but I really do think going for the SCVs instead was the better one. So maybe a small mistake. It might actually just be enough to keep Buell from taking any damage that Humperk Sasu had to deal to help him secure a win down the line. This Buell now is looking very strong. His choke is a little bit weak, but the backside here is looking very well fortified. Marines, tanks, very well spread out, turrets on the sides, and as we just saw, he has very, very fast reaction times. The, he pretty much almost instantly, within a second, of those units appearing on the minimap went for the shuttles to take him down. A lot of mass shuttles there flying around the map. He's gonna go for a different angle. Maybe he's just gonna go for a frontal drop here on the choke, much like what Buell did in the last game. Firebats are entering the bunker. Now he's just running back up. Just being silly. Just a silly firebat. Well, level one attack there for the Marines, level two is on the way. Tanks are on zero, zero, but two armies there are researching their upgrades. Hover Casazo here is on Level 1 attack, didn't go for armor first, went for level 1 attack. Got armor and shield on the way, though a level 2 attack, almost finishing up within seconds as well, very soon. Scarab damage upgrade, I think he already has Templar energy finished up, he's maxed out on supply, he's gonna build on the middle first before going in for an attack, wants to get some cannons in there to stop a counter attack from happening the moment he goes in and loses his units, because maybe that's something Bill really likes to do, going for counter attacks once he feels he is just big enough just big enough to sustain a solid production. And I don't think he's big enough to sustain a solid production. He's on five barracks, just four factories. That's not a whole lot to go for a push against Protoss with about 12 gateways, four robos, and more gateways on the way around the middle. So he goes in. This is definitely going to be a frontal choke unload. Goes in. Goes for the debos. Is he going to unload him to choke? He's not. He's going straight for the backside here. I didn't expect this one. I should have known better than to doubt him. He's going for the backside. A load there on the scene. The Reavers are everywhere. Although a lot of the tanks are so well spread out and taken on everything really quickly. He tries to go for the SCVs there. Reaver shoots. Reaver hits a couple of them, but not a lot of them. And that attack from Humperkins has a completely false flat, completely fails. He should have gone for the frontal drop attack and broken through the choke. 
and start killing units. He tr got a little bit greedy, went for the SCVs in the backside, didn't quite pan out as he wanted it to. I mean, this is such a well executed tank spread here on the scene. Everything that gets unloaded here just goes down very quick. Maybe he should have split up the shuttles and unloaded his shuttles on top of individual tanks instead to prevent from losing all of his units in one concentrated spot, but make sure that the tanks all shoot on each other, but also so that the Zealots and the, the Reavers and the, the, the Archons are basically killing the tanks as well. Different results, but you know, it's easy to say those things when you're watching the replay and looking at things in hindsight. In the moment, choices might appear to have very different results to you than they actually will have. Sometimes you make the wrong calculations. Sometimes you have to think so quick on the fly that the choices you make are simply wrong. It's very easy to talk when you are watching. Keep that in mind. So yeah, level 2 attack finished there for the Marines. Level 1 attack for ground is finishing up for the tanks as well for Bjol. Bjol now pushing beyond his choke, uses his dropship to fly in. Broccoli starts unloading, target fires the shuttles, forced to unload the shuttles a little bit prematurely. Gonna storm out everything here on the scene. The Templars only gets up two storms. Great target firing from the Marines and the tanks on the Templars to prevent real serious damage. The tank spread is still amazing here on the scene. Getting locked down now as well on EMP too. Hasn't really built any extra additional structures at all. Mostly focused on slowly pushing out there through the front. A lot of gateways around the middle. I count about 6, 6, 2, 2, so about 16 in total. Building a new line of cannons after the frontal line of cannons has been taken down. Preparing another shuttle drop, although he's pretty much close to maxed out, so a shuttle drop not going to be very successful. It's going to be a single shuttle drop with a single Corsair while going for a frontal attack. There's a lot of tanks here, tanks on the high ground as well. How is this going to turn out? How is this going to turn out? I don't think it's going to break through as more tanks have spawned right behind the bunker line. Drop comes in. I feel a lockdown is coming. There's a lockdown. Shuttle doesn't achieve anything. Great defense there from Biel. Just playing very calm, composed. Taking his time to go bigger. Though we're only 15 minutes in. Not even 15 minutes in. Thanks, I finished up the level 1 attack and level 1 armor. Marines are level 2 weapon. Level 3 weapon is on the way. I like this fact that he's doing level 3 weapon. More shuttles coming in. Biel is oh, response just in time. Gonna take down the shuttles before they can realistically unload anything. One settled unloaded, got taken down immediately by the tanks. Lost the ghost as well, but the lockdown defense. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. The Hamburg Asasu, the clock is starting to tick. The, talk, the clock is really ticking here. The clock is ticking and it's ticking faster and faster. Bill throwing down about six factors at the same time. He's gonna defend himself from his frontal attack. The goons are there to kill the tanks on the high ground, so are the Templars. The goons, the tanks on the high ground are really messing him up. So I really think there's too many tanks behind this wall to be able to push through. Because the upgrades for both players are about equal, which is always in favor of the Terran. If you're on equal upgrades with the Protoss, it is always in favor of the Terran. So he defends the frontal attack really easily, doesn't really lose anything at all. Did use two defensive matrixes just in case he had to, just in case massive storms were coming down on the tank line. Humber Kazazi, you're struggling to push forward. Struggling to hurt Biol. Biol has really leveled up his 1v1 skills tremendously over the year 2021. At the start of 2021, he was kind of an easy target for Humber Kasazu because he simply didn't have the experience for fastest 1v1. But now, almost a year later, he's an absolute monster. He's an absolute monster. The loads on the side there is hunting for turrets to open up a hole here on the side. But Yol now moving into the middle. He knows this is his chance. Because Humber Kasazu a lot of units here on the side. There's a tank on the, tank on the high ground as well to help him defend. It's going to completely screw over Humper Kassazi's plan, and now we have tanks moving into the middle. Units are going to hire to take down those tanks. I like this one. He has to clear that out. He's also going for all the tourists here on the side. But he's losing a lot of supply. He's losing a lot of supply. We've got Marines in the middle, ready to take down these gateways. Oh, they're not going to achieve that much. Just send them in there without really caring about them. A lot of drop has been loaded up. A lot of drop has been loaded up gonna fly across the map try to get in once again but as I said before the ghost defense is real it's really really doing a good job 
Now most of the turrets on the side here get taken down. Tank they're taking down the very last Lagoon. Looks like Humbrick is out, so instead of going in over the weak side, which is the side that's been completely opened up, it's gonna go in over the strong side, which might just throw off Pyol just enough for the drop to work. Maybe it won't. Because Pyol so far hasn't made any mistakes. <laughs> Goes in. Well, those are a couple zealots on the top side. They actually to, uh, take care of the tank. So many lockdowns. But Tempos are on the scene. The SVs are running away though in time. SVs are running away in time. Keeps most of the SVs alive. And doesn't take any significant losses. Maybe even got helped out by Hamburger Sasu. Because he lost about 10 of his SVs. Which opens up supply space for another 5 tanks. Which at this point when he's got so much money in the bank. Is actually pretty good. Is actually pretty useful. So maybe Hamburger Sasu did more harm than good. With that drop. I mean he has to try to get the drop down. He has to try to kill his SVs. He has to try it. It is one of the most important things to do. But if it doesn't work, ooh, it, it, it can come to bite you pretty badly. Because he lost a lot of supply there. In those shuttles and in with those zealots. Comes in once again. The ghosts are away from home. Oh, he's still got another 9 or 10 there in the backside. Lockdowns coming down. Very fast lockdowns. I think he pretty much got everything. He pretty much got everything that it units inside them. The drop defense here with the lockdowns is insanely good. Shuttle's going into the middle. Gonna have to unload the shuttle on top of lockdown. There it is. There's nothing inside anyway. The lockdowns have been the absolute MVP this game. The lockdowns have been the MVP. Gil is playing his brains out. He's playing amazingly well. An absolute master of Terran race. During he was a Terran main when he was a semi pro. He's really displaying his skills right here, right now. He's really showing up. He's making Hamburger Sass attempts at dealing damage look weak. They aren't, because a lot of players do fall victim. Hamburger Sass's attempts as a Protoss to kill them, they do fall victim to his immense power strengths, but not here, not today. Biol there, scans coming down to take care of the Dark Templars. Nope, very quick reaction, he notices them. Immediately before they even deal any damage, takes him down. Tesla's on the scene as well to provide detection. Zealots are spawning in the base there, but not all of the gateways are there on the scene. He doesn't have all of the gateways. Those Rob there comes in, gonna try to go straight for the money shot there on the SCVs. Lockdowns are happening. Lockdowns are happening. Templars are. Templars can storm. Templars can storm, and Hamburgers has a call GG. Loses PvT and TVP against Buell, who played in a very convincing dominating fashion. I don't often expect Hamburg Asasu to get dominated like this, but this was absolutely superb, amazing defense. At some points, I thought that Buell was done for. Some some moments, it looked really bad for him, but he defended Micro controlled himself so well, so smartly, that in the end, he comes out, the victor, and Hamburg Asasu comes out with a loss. So that's it for today. It was RGB for RJB TV. See you next time and hope you enjoyed the video and hope you will enjoy the next one as well. Have a good day.